What's going on, boxing fans? Julian Williams here at the distance. Got a prediction video for you guys. Um, haven't done one in a bit. So, anyway, I'm going to give this one a try. Jason Booth versus Steve Molder. Um, interesting matchup for the IBF Super Bandway Championship. Involves Steve Molder, who's a fighter who, who's actually the former IBF Super Bandway Champion. Um, had the, held the title since like, from like 2006 to 2008. Had a unification battle with Celestino Caballero November 2008 and lost by a, by a technical um, knockout in the fourth round. Only loss of his career has been on the comeback trail since. Had four fights, um, all victories, one split decision. I think his last victory was a knockout, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but Steve Mulder, you know, a lot of people kind of ridden him off after the Caballero fight. And, you know, Caballero is the type of fighter that will give any fighter problems. So you got to give Molder props for fighting that fight. But when you see that, when you watch that fight, you kind of see that Molder seemed to be um, a little hesitant in the ring in what he did. And Caballero took advantage of that. And um, Jason Booth, Jason Booth, um, veteran, I think he's about 32 years old, fought primarily overseas. Um, last match was against Matthew Marsh match match ended up um, I think ended in like the 11th round because of a cut over Marsh's eye um, kind of, it was kind of a close fight um, I thought that Marsh gave him some trouble um, with Marsh's um, style fight Marsh I believe is younger fighter I think he's 27 I think he had only 15 fights at that time but Marsh's um, style gave him a lot of trouble um, in the early going of the fight, and there was a cut, like in the first round from a headbutt. But anyway, interesting fight. And what do I think of this fight? First off, for Steve Mulder to win this fight against Jason Booth, if you look at Steve Mulder's style, he's he works hard. He not only does he work hard, he has great athletic ability and good boxing ability. And being a southpaw fighter. He's gonna have kind of an advantage, a little kind of more of an advantage, more so than anything else. Being the southpaw fighter, I'm not sure to how many southpaws Jason Boots has fought. Sorry about that. I don't know what the hell that was, but anyway, I'm not sure how many southpaws that Jason Boots has fought, but very few southpaws have you know good athletic ability um, and good boxing ability. And combine them, you know, and combine them both together. Steve Molder has both. He's um, you know, he's he has a very good um. He's not gonna knock you out. He's not gonna overwhelm you with a lot of punches, but he's gonna come in and he's gonna box and he's gonna move and he's gonna use that athletic ability to his advantage, especially being a younger fighter. So Steve Molder in this fight um has to, I think, the number one necessity for Steve Molder is movement. If you look at the Matthew Marsh fight, Jason Booth had a lot of trouble against Marsh because he moved. The movement was a lot of trouble for um, Jason Booth's style. He needs Steve Mulder needs to throw a quick jab and move. Set up some jab combinations, throw the um, throw the um, left hand and move. And sometimes Mulder does have a tendency to throw punches out of range, but same with, with Jason Booth. Both fighters kind of have tendencies to throw punches out of range. So I think in this fight, Steve Mulder has to stay calm. He has to be patient. He has to um, put all his shots together very well and open up on Jason Booth in order to get this victory. If he can, if he can find a way to find openings against Jason Booth, he has this matchup. And also he needs, like I said, he needs to move. He needs to move a whole lot in this matchup to get this victory because Jason Booth, with that style, you know, he has the hands, you know, in front of him, and he moves forward. He moves side to side. But when even with that side to side movement and the and being in kind of a shell, you have trouble protecting yourself from a from a quick jab at times with his style. And because with Matthew Marsh, you saw a lot of those shots come over the top. And also with um Jason Booth's style, he likes fighting on the inside. He he likes fighting on the inside, but at times Jason Booth has a tendency to throw from out of range, and the shot still lands even though he's out of range. So, so um, Mulder has to move. He has to move and um, throw that, throw that jab, throw the um, quick jab, move, um, set up his combinations, um, 
maybe throw three or four punches and and then just move set up the set up the movement with the shots um and also you know you know fight calm and controlled um that's Steve Moeller's keys to victory Jason Booth has to fight he has to fight a very unorthodox fight he has to come forward he has to continuously pressure um Steve Moeller and he has to be in his face he has to um if you look at Jason Booth fights it's not until maybe the third round until he throws the jab he started you know because before that you know he's throwing all kinds of power shots you know he you know he's, he's standing in front of him and Booth's just throwing you know power power hooks in this fight he has to set up those power hooks you know throw throw the jab throw the jab and then follow it up with the with the hook you know go to the body take the movement away um also also you know just staying in front of him just simply pressuring him see you know because if you know if you pressure him and you see in the cab arrow fight you know with with um the the amount of pressure and work rate that cab arrow was applying um it gave um it made um Moeller a little hesitant and it made him look I guess it made him kind of fight much more of a different fight just because I think maybe because you know it was the style involved and if Jason Booth could just pressure him and find a way to just stay in his face and take those big steps over to cut off the ring and um cut off the angles and and you know find a way to move you know move that that right foot forward move the right foot forward and kind of just um take that big step inside you know and, and try that head first and um also try and try to go for the uppercut try the uppercut um and see how it does when it lands follow it up with the with the left hook right uppercut left hook see what that does um like because when um because if you look at molder fights you see how his hands are positioned his hands are you know he has one low one high um Throw that left, left to the body, uppercut, left hook. Um, that's that's a pretty good punch to throw against how against the type of style he is with how his hands are positioned. So, anyway, with this fight, what do I see happening? Um, I think originally this fight was supposed to happen in July, um, but it was postponed. Um, now it's happening September 11th. Like so much since the beginning, but me personally. I'm gonna go with Steve Moeller in this fight, despite the fact that Jason Booth is a veteran going for a third championship, pr primarily fighting in Britain, you know, having two um, British championships, um, and now fighting for necessarily the world championship. I think it's a, it's gonna be a real step up in competition, possibly for for Jason for Jason Booth, um, fighting a fighter who's been in the ring with. Um, we actually been in the ring with perhaps one of the best top ten fighters today. I think Molder will have that advantage, and I, but I do think that Jason Booth's style could possibly make Molder a little hesitant if he lets Booth stand in front of him. But I think that Steve Molder has enough tools to take this fight on a unanimous decision and claim or reclaim the IBF Super Bantamweight Championship. So I'm going to go with Steve Molder by unanimous decision. Um, in um possibly a competitive fight, possibly competitive, but I see I personally see Steve Moeller getting a getting a um, unanimous decision. So anyway, guys, that's the distance. Thanks for watching. Peace.